So I wanted to read one more chapter of Everyday Naked, Sacred and Profane Morsels of Truth, my first book, and the only hard copy one, the rest are digital, to download into your iPhone, iPad, or Kindle. You don't have to have a Kindle reader. It's on Kindle and Amazon, but there is a Mac program to put on your computer. Uh, so you don't even need one of those devices. But one of my favorite chapters is Wedding from Hell. So I would love to read that to you about the day I got married. So here we go. As soon as I can find it. This was the one that I read at my first book reading. I had never done a book reading at Borders. And there I was with a microphone, and I really enjoyed it. Wedding from Hell. I probably should have found the page first. Since here it is. <laughs> Everything was all set for the big day, until we had to change the wedding date six days before the event. There was one small thing. Michael's divorce wasn't final. That's the guy I was going to marry. We sheepishly approached my father with the news, who replied, The judge has to chase you down the aisle with the divorce papers. In New York State, it is considered bad form to marry if you are already detained in matrimony with a previous wife. Michael tried explaining this to his lawyer, but instead of filing the necessary papers, she just moved across town and lost his request in the flurry. <clears throat> At least this would give me a few more days to finish the nightmare of a wedding dress I was sewing. Talk about hell. Somewhere in my pea brain. I had this firmly entrenched notion that I had to do everything for my wedding except sign my fiancé's divorce papers. I had wrestled with nine yards of silk for my wedding dress that was patched together like a quilt on LSD, and when it was done, it didn't fit. I slipped it over my head and stopped breathing. The wind had been knocked out of my trachea. It needed to be let out, but there was nowhere for it to go. After beating my fists on the walls, I added another band of silk around the empire waist and proceeded to screw up the baking of my wedding cake. This is a job that should only be handled by professionals. I, for one, do not know how to convert a cake recipe for 300 people, given to me by a friend, into a whittly iced cake for 20. I tried to cover up my mistake with rows of strawberries, but it didn't work. Rather than serving two layers of deflated styrofoam to my guests, I decided to slip a Duncan Hines layer under one of the styrofoam slabs and call it a day. This was after my third attempt at getting my cake to rise. I inspected the cake plates after the guests had left. Only the layer made from scratch was left on the dishes. Duncan Hines won. I had other troubles. The exact timing of the deli platter from Wegmans was a concern. Would there be enough luncheon meat with the covered dish of lasagna my friend was bringing to serve 20 people? My father was worried about bologna, and I was battling with braiding my hair into bird nests above my ears. I hadn't discovered hairspray yet. Finally, I just put it in a bun and should have had a stiff one, but I didn't drink doubles then. It would have been an ideal day to start. Then Grandma called to say she was too sick to come to the wedding. I've got diarrhea, Mary. So did I, but that didn't stop me from going to my own wedding. I think it was all those cakes that I baked. I had a feeling my grandmother's diarrhea had something to do with my aunt visiting her, 
Sister Fidelia was a full-fledged nun who had been incarcerated since the age of 11 in a convent without benefit of fresh bread or sex. She would always arrive at Grandma's house with a huge bag of stale bread and cake from Harrison Bakery across from the convent. She had once bought a cake shaped like an open Bible, which Grandma had shellacked to admire forever. That's probably what got Grandma feeling all mushy inside. Michael and I leaped into our rusting van with grenade impressions on the quarter panels and drove out to Grandma's house on the way to the wedding. I slipped into my nine yards of homemade dress in the cabin of our beleaguered van in the sweaty afternoon of a June day in Syracuse, New York. The silk stuck to my skin as I looked through the holes in the van at Grandma's house. She appeared at the front door, looking pissed that we had showed up. She looked fine to me, but then Grandma could be suffering from severe psoriasis and be dragging out fully loaded trash cans to the curb in a blizzard. That's why I thought a little diarrhea shouldn't stop her from attending something as important as my wedding. Her face went white, and it wasn't from losing her lunch. Her greeting still rings in my ears. What are you doing here? she bellowed. You can read the rest of this chapter, Wedding from Hell, in my book, Everyday Naked, Sacred and Profane Morsels of Truth. It's on Amazon. And let me know if you would like me to make it a digital download for your Kindle. The link is below. Enjoy. And have a beautiful day. Aloha from Hawaii.